Hola. I'm back. Can you hear me now? And yes, I was speaking sign language. Entiendes or no? I'm multilingual for those of you who are just learning the deal. And I speak more than just verbal languages. Because apparently there's still a lot of ignorant fucks out there who think that that's the only way people communicate. Anyway. Apparently, my higher being wanted me to not be so emotional to articulate this message because I'm get, I'm turning into a hot ass mess. That's what, you know, I guess ladies are prolifically renowned for. Um, but yeah, no, it's just because it really means that much to me, man. And like I said, I'm really having like a realization for myself, like how much of her lead I really followed. I went... You know, wanted to see kind of what the WNBA had to offer, decided to pursue it, but kind of like half-assed because I also really was mostly intending to pursue my musical aspirations. And that's kind of the first industry that I wanted to break into uh, first. And then I just figured, you know, just because something, a lane doesn't exist, a league doesn't exist now doesn't mean that I can't be the one to innovate it or pioneer it or create it myself. I mean, that's what Shebron James would do. So why not? Look at all the things that LeBron James accomplished. And this is absolutely no shade. This is complete respect to him. Look at all the things that man accomplished with his high school diploma. You're talking to an educated black woman who graduated in the top less than 1% of her class in three and a half years, went to school for business, graduated with the highest honors. I don't want to have to like brag about myself and sit here and talk about myself. And it's like, unfortunately, sometimes you got to bring your resume back out so that people can put some fucking respect on your name. I opened up three businesses after college. A sole proprietorship, a partnership LLC, and a 501c3. All B Corp founded, all B Corp um, businesses. And I wanted to pursue the WNBA because of my love and basketball dreams. But, and I knew, like, again, I wasn't going to, like, go in there thinking, oh, I'm just going to expect everything to be handed into me. No, like, I, I want to work hard. I want to earn my stripes. That's what my daddy taught me um, without teaching me directly, <laughs> like, without being, like, you know, directly involved in my life. But that is what my father taught me. That you can be the captain of your fate. And if you don't like something, you don't got to tolerate it. And the best thing a woman can do for herself is give herself options. <laughs> and the thing is, is, the one thing that I think I was always kind of lacking for myself within my game was like the mentality. It was that Mamba mentality. Like I always had all the physical attributes, like physically I'm, I'm six foot tall and I'm strong and I have abs and I got these strong legs and I have nice form and I don't have any, you know, physical disabilities, like by the blessing of God, um, or any like major problems that I deal with. And so with that being said, like all the tools are like right there for me to like be great or whatever the fuck. 
But I will say that for myself, especially originally coming up, like just through the recruiting process and the NCAA and all that stuff, I was entirely turned off by the business aspect. I was not compelled. There was not something that drew me to like want to put the kind of work in that I knew it was going to take to really be like that kind of a player. Because for me, money at the time, just like most kids, was my motivator. So it's like the WNBA, when, when you really do your research, people, it is nothing like the NBA. It is a part-time job. And you get an average of maybe $30,000 per player a year. And it's like a fucking million dollar salary cap for a 15 player roster. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. Why aren't you in the league? Because I'm in a league of my fucking own. I could buy that league. That's how much y'all don't fucking know. But like I said, like, I'm not saying that because I'm trying to just disrespect the entity. I want to help change the culture. I want to see women get paid. When I, when I got to sit on the bench, the Mercury bench, when they were out here playing the Aces, when I got to sit with them and, like, really watch them play and, like, be in that championship-level environment and, and, again, just watch my idols, like, up close, Diana Taurasi fucking high five me. I was like, I never want to wash this hand. <sighs> when I got to sit there and see like everything that they do, and then and then to just really know what really goes on underneath it all. It's it's hard to like not say something, especially when you're a fucking savage terrorist like myself. And all you do is talk about things that you probably shouldn't talk about out loud. But whatever, man. It is what the fuck it is. Somebody got to do it. Somebody has to start the conversation. And if that somebody's got to be this one, then I guess it is what the fuck it is. Nobody wants to watch the league. And here's why. Everybody wants to say it's because the women aren't as talented or this or that or whatever. And don't get me wrong. Sorry, ladies. There are some of you that are in the league that I look at and I think to myself, how did you get on the roster? But overall, the reason why people don't want to watch the league is because it's not marketed properly. That's why. They need somebody like, you know the deal. To help market them properly. To fucking sell tickets. That's what it is. Because the talent is there. And the potential. Is unlimited. There's really no ceiling. Like what the women could really be capable of. Is. Incredible. But one. You need all of the players. To like buy into that operation as well. Shit, there could be a strike coming here soon. Just saying. You need all the players to buy into that. As far as like, you know, working together. Unfortunately, one of the things that women deal with way too much just in any business space, which is why, you know, it's very rare that you see the Oprahs of the world these days coming out of these new generations. And... It's because women don't work well together. Because women start to get fucking jealous and petty and weird. And then also just aren't good at like squashing that shit. Like aren't good at being able to like move the fuck on for real. Women are some of the biggest grudge holders and it's ridiculous. And then what ends up happening is they just end up like all that bullshit that they that pent up bullshit that anger that anger and that whatever that jealousy that envy that you're projecting it's all just going to do exactly what the law of karma tells us it's going to do it's going to come right fucking back so it's like even when you see like 
a lot of women out here who they try to make franchise players out of, a lot of it, their own teammates don't actually support them. A lot of their own teammates are mad about the fact that they're the franchise player or that they're getting uh, more publicity or whatever, even though maybe their shooting percentage is better or maybe their this is better or their that is better. When really what the biggest issue is, is that nobody is just genuinely getting taken care of. So therefore, everybody's just projecting their problems onto each other. And it's creating a culture of failure. Y'all can tell me I'm lying. But then that would make you a liar. So, think wisely. And also remember, anything that you say or think can and will be used against you in my court of law, which is a lot different than the court of law that, you know, we operate by, which I'm a law-abiding citizen, you know what I'm saying? But let's just say I really serve a higher authority, so therefore there's no rules to this shit, only dreams and consequences, so careful. Anyways, y'all, but I really do want to end this on a positive note as much as I like to have my little Dill Corner rants because it really is a beautiful time. There is so much evolution. There is so much progression. And I just want to continue to contribute to that. I just want to see that change be made. I want to see those conversations be had. I want people to stop acting fake about it like it's not there. And like, just let's let's move on. And let's be great because the future is female. That's the truth. <laughs> Trust me, I live in the future most of the time. And that's why sometimes I have to like take a second to step back and get present again. But the future is female. Specifically a black woman. Okay, bye. Love you. Well, a mixed one named Dylan Gonzalez. <laughs>